Peace, peace, family. So I'm back with another one. Today what I wanted to do is I wanted to talk to my chosen ones about how you will never, ever, 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 ever be able to trust them again. That is something that once it's broken, it is no repair. You know what I mean? And that goes for the ones who live by the witchy playbook. You know, when you moving in your, your highest vibration or at least you aiming towards it, you're working on, fixing a few things, changing the knob, turning the frequency, you know what I'm saying? There's always a special place for improvement and for an honest mistake and for that trust to be rebuilt. It won't be as pretty as the last face, but you can get it pretty close, you know? But as far as dealing with this witchy team, you know what I mean, and they playbook and what they do, how they use it, you know, the things they say, the way they infect environments. That trust, in, in, in my observation, in my, my lifetime, and then just from the ones around, it's like, it's almost like their goal is to break the trust and then to see how much you are still willing to give to them. Meaning, it could be energetically, it could be financially, whatever the given is for you and your situation per se. You know what I mean? I haven't ran across too many beings that use that playbook that show that, you know, you cannot trust them. And I know for a lot of us, you know, we used to be in spaces our own so before we got to where we are at today and... It was hard for us to kind of trust ourselves in our decision making. But for me, when I just overall process of looking at everything, it's like our goal, even when we were younger, was always to better ourselves and to be in a, a, a more different light. You know, our cup was always half full, never half empty. And then we also had our own witchy upbringings that we had to survive through in order to get to where we at so we can start thriving while we're surviving you know what i mean because they keep changing the rules out here to try to keep us in survival mode so every time we figure out a way and we saw us around the systems set up they figure out another way to try to keep us in survival mode which is more closer to our animalistic characteristic traits you know what i mean but i haven't dealt with too many beings in that space that was able to whether it was a short period of time with some male friends or whether it was with the opposite sex, you know what I mean? And what I realized as well is like the people who are easily breaking trust and not doing the things they need to do to repair it, these beings are going to be far out gone. Most of these beings aren't even working on themselves in a healthy manner. And I always like to put healthy or natural in front of it because two, one and two, because those are the words I know. And then for two, because we got the witchy side, you know, they do learn things while they're over doing that witchy stuff. You know what I mean? So they are learning. I don't like to take away from them not learning. They just disgusting the things that they focus their energy on. You know what I mean? So it's like you could be focused on, I don't know why art came to me. You could be focused on, you know, being a great painter you know or teaching your little one something you know what i mean and then they'll have to come around and try to put your energy and focus in another space but what kind of got me to this subject today was right i realized like well i've known them for a short period of time long period of time medium period of time I could use my mom's as an example. Like, that's my mom's. I, I'm always going to love her. You know what I mean? But I don't, I, I don't, I would never be in another space to where I wholeheartedly trust my mom to have my best interest at heart. You know what I mean? Whether it's sharing information with me, whether it's trying to be there physically to support me, any of these things in that nature, you know? 
I look at it like this, and I'm just using me and mine as an example. I haven't talked to my moms in a while. I ain't got no beef with her. I'm just using my life as an example. But it's like my mom had crushed the vase when she was little. And she left it crushed and didn't start trying to work on it till like 15, 20 years later. You know what I mean? And even still at that rate, if you break a vase, you have to find each piece that's crumbled, that failed, that broke off, and you have to glue it back together, tape it back together. And then you also gotta make sure you get the cracks and crevices right, so that way you put in the right broken piece into the right space, you know what I mean? Because you could break a whole vase and then still not know how to piece it back together. But it's like, she start working on it 10 years later, but the vase had already been broken. So now you're taking your time rebuilding this vase. The vase then made it difficult for you to find the rest of the pieces. Because now you done cleaned up. You done done all this kind of other stuff. So now you even still, even when you do get it together, or she does get the vase together, it's still a piece missing. Because it was such a long process in between there of, you. if you ever broken anything, 10 times out of 10, if you don't keep it locked away and secure, it's either going to go missing or it's going to end up breaking more. You know what I mean? So that's why even when we have like jewelry, let's say you break a piece of jewelry or something, you usually got a box or something or a drawer or a, a safe space where you put it at to where you know you can find that same material object whole. Whether it's broken, you know, but it's still whole. It's still there together to be repaired at your convenience, you know? But you cannot go into repairing the vase get frustrated because the piece isn't staying because you don't put glue there so then you punch the vase or smash the vase out of an emotional reaction you calm down now you realize oh shit you just fucked the vase up even more small analogy once we get to our other spaces and our higher frequencies even when they do crush the vase it, it doesn't break us more because that vase was just a, an analogy we are more than that vase. So it doesn't allow us to make room for those same trials, errors, tribulations, you know, mistakes. It, it only happens but so much, you know what I mean? So like another small situation, you know, when I had moved into my place where I'm at now, I remember my mom's telling me like, she got a couch for me, blah, 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 blah. I didn't ask her for a couch or anything. I had all my stuff in storage because I knew I was about to get my space. So I'm like, I just keep all my stuff in storage until I figure out the the next spot location, blah, 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 whatever. So as I find the next space, I start getting my stuff moved in, taking it out of the storage or whatever. It probably took me about two days to get the storage clear. It wasn't a lot of stuff, but I just didn't want to do it all in one day. And my couch was like one of the last things that I had was going to grab. But I remember my mom specific, specifically telling me like, don't grab your couch, you know, you can leave that there. I got another couch for you, blah, blah, blah. It's brand new, it's still in a box. It just got to be put together. Show me pictures of it, you know, in the box, sent me the photo of her couch because she had an identical one. It was an extra one that she had. And then in my world, I know my moms. I know my mom do a lot of this. But I know it's also a lot of no action followed behind it because she's looking for me to come back by. So with me not coming back by, meaning that she wants me to trust her word and to believe in what she's saying. But because I'm me, She's already done broken this vase before. I done went through the process myself of putting the vase back together as best as I can. You know what I mean? In my world, I just take it as, okay, man, that's cool. As we talking, I'm letting her know, like, yeah, that's fine, that's cool. You know, you want to pack it up or you want your husband bring it over, blah, blah, blah. Or I can come out there. However, it would have worked. You know what I mean? Long story short, I knew not to trust my mama. The next day, I went and grabbed my couch out the storage because that was like I had like two or three other big items I had to grab so I grabbed my couch out the storage for the next week or so 
she was giving me excuses, you know. Oh, she had to work late. Oh, Gerald was at home. Oh, it, it, this got to be done this way. Oh, it needs to. Every day it was something else when she could have just told me all of this all at once. But what happened was before she even made it to all those other days of excuses, when we talked the day after I had got my couch, you know, she's like, hey, yeah, blah, blah. I was, I'm going to. Um, I'm not going to be able to bring it by um, today or, or she said today or tomorrow. One of the days. I don't know. I'm getting them mixed up. Either way, she was basically giving me an excuse that she wasn't going to be able to pull up on me. So I was already turned like, Mom, you good. Like, I had already got my couch at the storage because I know how you are. So, you know, it's not a, it's not a big deal. Like, I've already got it covered. If you get the other couch over here, cool. If you don't get that other couch over here, I've already got mine out the storage. And I think that pissed her off. Like, and she didn't say it, but I could tell she was looking for me to keep needing or wanting her. Like, you, you my mom, so like, and I'm grown into a man, so you supposed to let, I shouldn't be needing you for all these other extracurricular things. I should need you as a mother. Not all the extracurricular shit, you know what I mean? But that was just a song, I don't want to keep going into that. That was just like a small example of diving in, just like as far as like, my mom, I'm very connected with my moms. So for me to be this connected to a being and have them raise me, I got the same blood as them and everything, and for me still not to be able to trust them, because that was my caregiver for a, a good portion of my life. You know what I'm saying? Like most of our parents are. I knew once I was able to do it myself, I knew I wouldn't be able to trust that entity anymore, no matter how much I wanted to. You know what I'm saying? Like, the opportunity was out there, it was given, but I knew that I had to cross my T's and dot my I's myself because I already know what comes with that other playbook. Now, if I didn't want to take in my own knowledge information or the universal knowledge information, I would have just trusted my mom like oh she's talking again and we're being nice and we're on good terms and she said she's gonna do it so she's gonna do it I'm like hell no hell no I had some other people that's you know not my moms that I've known for probably three or four years same thing with them I had a buddy of mine who we don't even engage anymore you know we kind of used to be like this to a degree his son my daughter was kind of like this you know what I'm saying? He was in the court getting custody of his son. I was in the courtroom taking my BM to the court. We was like this. You know what I'm saying? It was just a lot of shit. But I knew I couldn't trust him because it was a lot of things that led into place that, you know, just throughout our our ship that I knew that I couldn't trust him. Whether it was small things like calling me and telling me you need a ride from work. And then I'm on my way out to get you from work. And then you don't call me and tell me that you got another ride and I done already came out to your job. Like, like those kind of subtle things. So like when I got done being involved with my one person I used to be engaged with, this was years ago. I was engaged with them for probably like two, three years. You know, like soon as I leave out of that, that's when he falls in line with the next being, with the same being that I was just involved with. And I, I, me and him don't engage or communicate no more after that, you know what I'm saying? I don't deal with the other shorty. I had been stopped dealing with her before, but to me, it was just a whole trust thing, you know what I mean? So, like, in my world, I had been dealing for two, three years, so I kind of had to understand that you was already being snaky and sly in between the lines already, you know what I mean? And I don't give a fuck about that witch, bitch, so it ain't... I knew she had to be a witch to open the door, blah, blah, blah. I'm not pointing it at the witch. I'm talking about as far as the one that I had around me who is his job and his space and place to make sure that I don't trust him. It was my mom's job to make sure I don't trust him. I can name a lot of other situations where the trust has been broken and people just said, fuck it. It is what it is. I'd rather stop talking to you than man up or woman up and then make amends on these things. Or I'd rather just play scared or be a little bitch and then disappear for a few weeks, a few months, a few days, you know, and then I'll pop back up. So that way I don't have to go through this whole apologetic thing. I don't have to repair the vase, you know. Matter of fact, I'll bring you a new vase. You won't even know that the old vase was broke. Like, we're not that retarded. You know what I'm saying? Like, even if we had a dog that we loved and you, you were supposed to take care of it while we was out of town for the week, something happened to the dog, we get back, 
you didn't want to tell us something happened to the dog so what you did was you went to some animal planet and you found the exact replica of that dog you think we wouldn't know we would still be able to tell by the vibration if we had a one chihuahua look like this and acted this way and then we left for vacation came back and it's a, another chihuahua there looks exactly like the last one but his vibration and frequency is different we would know you know what i mean so outside of going through all the other trust factors things you know what i mean because when, when you start digging into those spaces We have to become, as, as men being in these spaces, you got to become better leaders. You know, so as a better leader, once you get yourself positioned and you positioning yourself, then you're going to make sure that the one around you is following. You can't have two leaders in the house. You know what I mean? In order to lead, somebody has to follow. So if I'm the leader, that means my motherfucking person is going to follow. And they have to trust that I'm not jumping them off no cliffs or no bridges. And that be the problem these days is people going to a lot of any kind of ship. Friendship, you know, spousal ships, all that kind of stuff on, like, on bad faith. They go into it on bad faith. And then it just puts this bad aura, negative aura energy around what, whatever you guys is trying to do or set up or accomplish or, I don't know, pursue. You know what I mean? So it's always like, oh, let me go into this and cover my own ass. If you got a process covering your own ass when you're going into something, then you shouldn't be going into it. You know what I mean? And especially when we out here and we don't have to deal with people on all levels. We don't have to deal with, we're not in high school anymore. We're not in middle school, elementary school. My daughter is forced to see certain people, deal with them every day. I don't have to do that out here. You know, as an adult, I do to a small degree, meaning if I go to the same stores, if I'm working the same job, I gotta see the same people. You know, that's a smaller degree. This world is bigger than that that box school. You know what I mean? So I don't really care about all the spousal cheating and all that shit. I don't even believe in cheating. Unless your life is a game, then I wouldn't even call it cheating anymore. And then I think we're far enough in that we should kind of see like, when I was in school, I could tell which guys would be trustworthy or you know monogamy with their partners it ain't gonna be the same caliber of guys so if you got somebody who like ah i did have a lot of fun i ain't gonna lie if you, I, I was really good in sports in school you know i played sports my whole life i was really good at sports i was at a pretty big school in my area too so like for me being good at, at multiple sports and then doing multiple other things and then my mom and dad made me i just had to maintain what my mom and dad made me and then i just had to keep being really good at everything else that i was doing so for me it was easier to kind of draw in lump sums of the opposite sex now from my homeboy I got plenty, a lot of homeboys, but I'm just speaking as far as one in particular that I got in mind. I'm going to say his name. Um, he wasn't in that space. Big heart, good dude, you know what I'm saying? Solid in the basketball, solid in the sports. But when it came to the other department, his pool wasn't as big, you know? So that didn't deter or turn him away from being a leader because he ended up getting married almost basically right after high school, a little bit of college. Then he basically got married right away you know to his wife got two kids they still together doing their thing you know what i mean but i say that to say as far as like i know what i'm gonna get if i go to this tree right here you know what i'm saying it's all very present i can observe it i can see i can tell you know and it's no different with the rest of these things out here so we just got to be more realistic so like Men, you don't get to go out and have multiple partners and do all this shit and be a liar and do all this shit and you ain't even in no lean position. And even if you're in a lean position, you can still do your thing on an honest frequency without having to be demonic and be an untrustworthy being. You know what I mean? Just because you are, you know, you have a, a, a more, let's say you just, I ain't gonna do that either. These English words, I swear to God, I, I don't swear to God, I take that back. Ah. I praise the God, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, the English words do us no justice, no justice. 
If you ever realize when you talk with people when they're first learning how to communicate, it's really simple for them to express what's going on. So if you ever notice, like most little people, kids, children, they usually tend to be a little bit more quiet until they learn a few more words. Because this shit is not easy or simple, you know, to break things down. But I, I say all that to say, like, be clear, you know what I mean? Be understanding, be knowledgeable, be aware. Once they already got this playbook in hand, all of the other chapters go with it. I know y'all want to be like, oh, well, you know, that could have been just your five situations and then your best friend's 20 situations in there. But that's not my situation. It's the same fucking playbook. When we go, when this meat goes, it's going to be more meat here to replace it. And they're going to be having the same spiritual battles. One got to deal with this playbook. One got to deal with that playbook. So for me, I, I just, I try to simplify it because we can make things a little too complex. All right, boom. You show me that I can't trust you. You know what I'm saying? So now I have to automatically assume, boom, you're using this playbook. And another reason I have to assume using this playbook because... You, you aren't really showing that you, you're working to make amends or to refix, rebuild, reheal, whatever the situation, circumstances may be. You know what I mean? And it's just like, you will save yourself a whole lot of time, trouble, headache, heartache, pain, you know, worrisome, anxiety, fear. You'll save all of that once you just understand, okay, oh, they got shitty communication. They must be using this playbook. So then you don't have to feel bad or guilty about as far as how you engaging with them because you already know they're opposition. It don't matter if they're attacking you right away or not. The Trojan brought a whole horse in. They didn't come at the door knocking and attacking, you know. Sometimes it's a lot more subtle. So just be mindful, keep your eyes open, be aware, you know what I'm saying? And try not to follow the narrative of everyone else out here, you know what I mean? Like. If you want somebody of high status, just understand what comes with it. You know what I mean? Like that, all king, most kings could deal with whoever they want to deal with, even though they had their queen and she knew her place and position and she had all the power and authority over all the other females and women. You know, we got to get to a more realistic understanding. What I gave y'all at first was my mom, then it switched over to a male associate. And now it's into the spousal department. You know what I mean? So these trust barriers and walls get broken daily and consistently. One, because of bad communication. Two, because people just ignore all the signs. You know what I mean? Like, nobody ever walks around with a million dollars just hanging out their pockets. You usually got to ask or you got to pay attention to what they're doing, how they're moving, what they're buying, purchasing. You know, where they live, what do they drive. You know what I mean? All these things. But I ain't want to run it up too long, you know what I mean? Once the trust is broken, 10 times out of 10, they are not trying to repair, you know what I mean? Tapping everything down below. Peace and love to the kings and queens.